Hello boys and girls, it's me, Mrs. Robinson, and today we are working on some more Common Core flashcards. But instead of multiplication there, <laughs> fractions, we are working on fractions today. So I want to go over some vo key vocabulary to start. We have two big words we're working with. We're working with a numerator, the number on top, and we're working with a denominator, the number on bottom. But let me go back over a little bit slower. The numerator is how many shaded pieces or how many pieces are left over that you have. So for instance, if we're working with the number one half, then we have cut our object or our circle into two pieces. We have cut it in half, half is two. So now that we have our two pieces, the numerator is telling us, well, how many do I have left? How much are shaded? When we look to our top number, it says we have one, so we would color in or there would be one side shaded. We have our denominator, which means the number on the bottom. How I always, always, always remember denominator is I think of denominator down, the number that's down, down-nominator. Just think of D is down, that's the number on the bottom. So our denominator in this case is two for half. So it tells us how many total pieces we have. Or, for instance, if it was a number line, how many equal sections you need. In this number line, we broke it in half, which gives us one, two sections. Two. Up here in the circle, we have one, two sides. Two. That's what's telling us is our denominator. So we have two strategies, two strategies for our flashcards today. We have our represent it and model it. So on the top of your flashcard, I want you to split it in half or your piece of paper, even if you're just practicing, break it in half. And on the top, I want you to represent it. I want you to draw it. I want you to model it. So step one is you use the denominator to tell you how many pieces you draw or how much you break apart a number line into or how much you break apart an object into. It could be a rectangle, it could be a circle, it could be hearts. You can represent it any way you want, but you need to know that you're starting with a total of two pieces. That's what's telling us, our bottom number. Now, the second step in the strategy is you're gonna use your numerator to tell you how many shades. So you're going to shade in one side. So we shaded in this one side. Now down here I have a couple examples of how you can model it. It doesn't have to just be a circle. Say like I said you wanted to do a rectangle. You would draw that rectangle and depending on your denominator, so in this instance it's two, we would cut it in half. That's what's telling us. We're drawing a rectangle, you cut it in half. Now say you want to draw objects. They could be smiley faces, flowers, whatever you want. I drew two hearts. How many hearts did I draw? I drew two hearts. And I'm going to shade it in depending on my numerator. Our numerator is one, so we shaded in one side, shaded in one side, and shaded in one heart. You can model it any way, but the first half of your page, I want you to model it. Now the second half of the page, we are working with another strategy in common core called number lines. We are using lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of number lines. So we're going to start by step one, drawing a number line. So you're going to draw a line. You're going to go all the way, kind of like a sideways eye. So on the left side of your eye, you're going to start with a zero. And on the right side of your eye, you're going to end it at a one. Because really what fractions are is you're breaking up one object, one number line into how many pieces. In my example today, we're working with halves. So we're breaking up our number line into two sections. So we're going to go right down the middle and pretend we just have like a scissors or something and just cut it and just cut it, draw a line right down the middle. And that's what you're going to label one half. After you've labeled it one half, because labeling is so, 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 so important, you are going to get your other color it's really good to use two colors here. Use a color for your denominator and a color for your numerator. So get your other color for your numerator to do your jumps. It's going to tell you how many jumps we're going to do. In this case, we have one jump, so you're going to start at your zero, and you're going to jump to one of the jumps. It lands on the half mark, which is why we're labeling this one half. 
That is strategy number two. And on the back, you're going to start on the top by writing the number form. And on the bottom, you're going to write the word form. And those are the Comma Core Fraction Flashcards. Now, you can also just do this on a piece of paper, on a whiteboard, on a computer, whatever you have. You can also represent this using cookies ooh, or cupcakes or toys. You can fraction out your toys. You can say, hey, I have these 10 toys. Let's make some fractions. And those are just some ideas that you can practice using fractions. Now I wanted to show you some more. Now I wanted to show you some more examples. So I'm gonna pull these up on your screen and then talk about them. I wanna first point out that my numerator is written in green and my denominator is written in pink. And I'm gonna keep that same visual on all my representations and number lines. On the left side, we have two halves. So I'm gonna either draw a circle, rectangle, or objects in two halves, which means two pieces. Now the numerator part, our green part, says that we have two pieces shaded in. When we shade in those two pieces, now that means our whole circle is colored, or our whole rectangle, or both our hearts are colored, which means that we now have one whole. Let's jump down to our number line example. So we drew our sideways eye. We started with zero and we ended with one. We cut our number line in half because remember we're dealing with halves as our denominator said. And we're going to jump how many times? Well, our numerator said two times. So you start at your zero and you're going to jump to your half and now you're going to jump to your one, which is the same as two out of two pieces, one whole. Does that make sense? Let's look over at the other side on one third to see if we can compare the two sides. With our circle, our rectangle, or our hearts, I now have thirds, which means three pieces. So I have to cut them or break them apart into three different pieces. So looking at my circle first, I have cut it into three pieces and my numerator says one so I'm only going to shade in one piece same as with my rectangle as well as with the hearts I only shaded in or colored in one heart with my number line I've drawn my sideways eye I started with zero I ended with one I labeled my other pieces because I now broke it apart into three equal chunks so see how there's only two lines in the middle? But if you put all your fingers together, you would see that in between the first two lines, that's one piece, like one section. Now jump to the second section. Now go to the third section. That's three sections, meaning three pieces. So when you go to your first line, you're gonna label that one third. Your second line, you're gonna label that two thirds. And now your third line, which is one whole, you're gonna label three thirds, which is three pieces out of three pieces. But our example on this side says only one third. So we're gonna go back to our zero and we're gonna jump just one jump, which lands us on what? One third. Then we're a numerical example of our fraction, one third. Now let's look at our other page. On our other page, we have examples of two thirds and three thirds. So on our two thirds, our circle, rectangle, or hearts, our three pieces are now only shaded in by two because our numerator says two out of the thirds, two thirds. So only two of them are gonna be shaded in this time, leaving one empty. Looking down at your number line, you did it again. You started with your sideways eye, you started with zero, then you went to one, but we broke it into, what does our denominator say? Thirds, so we need three equal sections. But when we go to do our jumps, we're gonna do how many jumps? Only two jumps. So go to your zero, you do one jump, and then you do two jumps. You're now on two thirds. On three thirds, you see that we're with one hole again. So even if we're now breaking our object into three pieces we're going to color three of them in so that technically means we have one whole because our whole circle or our whole rectangle or all three of our hearts are now colored in looking down at our number line 
We're starting with our sideways eye, zero to one. You broke it into your three sections. But look it, we had to jump all the way to the one. Three jumps is three out of three, which is one hole. I also have an example for you to see with one fourths, how we broke it up into fourths. Look at the difference now on our number line. You see our three lines, but it's four different sections. That's the biggest part with the number line, is you're not looking at how many lines in the middle you're drawing. You're looking at how many sections you've broken it up into. Same with the fifths. Look at the circle. Look at the rectangle. We have five sections now. But look, our numerator says two. So I had to color in two versus the other side that just says one. So that's where you're paying attention to the different fractions so i hope that was helpful i hope you can make all your two i mean all your halves all your thirds all your fourths all your fifths all your six and if you know that much then hey i think you're killing the game and i'm proud of you thus far so go build some fractions go practice your fractions and good luck see you next time bye